Let's explore cryptography in the editor. So in this program, we'll be writing the Caesar cipher encryption. So, so far, we're just asking the user for a message that they want to encrypt. We're going to convert it to all uppercase because we're only going to deal with uppercase alphabetic characters. Then we're going to encrypt it with the Caesar cipher. Now the Caesar cipher is simply a function that takes in the message, takes in a key, and spits back an encrypted result. And that is our job to write. We want to shift down every alphabetic character in the message by the secret key. That many, that many places. Um, so let's write that function. So let's lay down a little roadmap for our function. We want to build up this encrypted result so that it contains every alphabetic character of message shifted. So let's loop over the message. Inside this loop, we'll get the first character. We'll get the character at that index. Get the character at the current index. Now, if that character is alphabetic, we want to shift it and add it to the results. Otherwise, we'll leave it alone. We're only going to deal with alphabet characters. So if the character is alphabetic, shift it and add it to the result. Otherwise, just keep the original character and add it to the result. So if it is alphabetic, then we need to shift it. So we will compute the shifted index, get the alphabetic character at that index, and then add that character to the result. And we'll return the result. So let's implement all of these steps. So for var i equals 0, i is less than the length of the message, which is message.length. i plus plus, we want to do all of this. So get the character of the current index. We know how to do that. Our current character is equal to message.care at i. Now, if it's alphabetic, how can we check if it's alphabetic? When we have this string right here, the alphabet, which contains every uppercase alphabetical character, so we can use the index of method. If it exists within this string, then it must be alphabetic. So var alphabetic index is equal to alphabet.index of current care. Now, if it didn't exist, it'll return a negative 1. Otherwise, it'll return the index where it exists. It's going to be anywhere from 0 to 25. So if it's greater than or equal to 0, it must have existed inside of the string. So if alphabetic index is greater than or equal to 0, then it must be alphabetic. And we can do all these things. Otherwise, it's not alphabetic. So else, we'll just keep it the same. We will add encrypted results plus equals current character. But in here, it is alphabetic. So the shifted index is going to be this index shifted by the key. So let's say the letter was A. The index would be 0. The key is 8, so we need to shift it all the way up to index 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Great, so that'll become an I. Now the problem is, what if we're at a Z? That is index 25. We need Z to become index 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We need z to become index 7. So first let's add the key to the index. So our new index is equal to alphabetic index plus the key. Now if that key has gone past the edge, what we can do is use the modulus operator. So 33 mod the length of the alphabet is going to be it's going to wrap around and get that index. So 33 mod 26 is going to be 7. We're going to get the h. If you think about it, and if we just had a secret key of 1, z adding 1 would become 26. 26 mod 26 is 0, so z would become a. So new index is equal to new index modded by the length of the alphabet. Great. Now the new character is going to be the character at that index. So alphabet dot care at new index. We want to add that to the result. So encrypted result plus equals new care. All right, let's try that. So if we encrypt hello, awesome. 
let's try the one attack tonight. This is with a key of one, so this makes sense. A becomes B. Let's try something with a Z in it. Nice. Z became A, and O became P. And if we change the secret key to eight, awesome. Now what's cool is decrypting is just doing the encryption in reverse. So function Caesar decrypt encrypted that will be passed the encrypted message and the key. If we want to decrypt, all we have to do is do the encryption in reverse. So we'll pass it the negative key. So return encrypt the encrypted message and negative key. Decrypted print out Caesar decrypt of the encrypted message with our secret key. Try hello. Nice. So that is the Caesar cipher. So now we're going to show how easy it is to crack the Caesar cipher with the help of a computer. So in this scenario, we're assuming that my intelligence has picked up an encrypted message, and it's also picked up what the original message was intended to be. And the goal here is to figure out what key Julius Caesar and his generals are using. That way, I have this key and I can decrypt all future messages. All I needed was to get that one first original message and the decrypted message, and from that I can figure out the key. So I will try every possible key until I successfully decrypt the message into the original message. So all we have to do is loop over every possible key. There's only 26 possible keys, so we'll go from i0, i is less than 26, i++, plus plus. And we're going to try to decrypt the message with each key. So decrypt attempt is equal to Caesar decrypt. We're going to try to decrypt the encrypted message with this attempt key, I. Now, if it worked, if it was correct, if the decrypt attempt is the same as the original message, then we've cracked it. We can print success, cracked the message in I tries and let's print out the decrypted message and once we've done that we can return the key now if we go through this whole loop and we never actually decrypt it then something must have gone wrong so we'll return negative one and here we're calling crack T we're trying to crack Caesar and let's see if it works so we run this we're missing a plus right there. So if we want to try to de-encrypt hello, we want to shift it by 12. Success, we've cracked the message in 12 tries. There we go. That was easy. Now what happens if we try to use a key that's not between 0 and 26? What happens then? So if we want to encrypt the message hello with a key of 27, what do you think is going to happen? Ah, oh, the key was 1. So the reason there is that if we shift the entire message by 27, that's the exact same as shifting it by 1. Because once we shift it by 26, it's as if we shifted it by 0. A shifted by 26 is just A again. So really, there only are 26 possible keys, 0 through 25. And that is how quickly a computer can guess the proper key.